All right, y'all, what I'm going to talk to you a little bit about today is a uh, couple things. When to throw a buzz bait versus when to throw a whopper plopper or a, a plopper style bait. Of course, there's a couple companies now that have the, pretty much the same prop style bait, uh, bait, just like Rivers of Sea started out with the whopper plopper. We'll talk a little bit about when to throw one versus the other. And I'm also going to show you the setup that I like to throw both of them on. This I use the same setup personally for buzz bait as I do for the plopper. And I'm going to tell you why and, and just why this system and setup works best for me. All right, so we'll start off with the plopper. Plopper is, uh, I got to admit, I got on this game a lot, uh, pretty late. I, when everything came out and everybody was having their craze over what the whopper plopper does and catching fish on it, I was like, yeah, yeah, my buzz bait is just doing just fine. I'm cool. I'm good. Um, and plus just a good old school buzz bait is, is worked since the beginning of the time and it still works. You know, you can put different plastics on it. It's very versatile. You can skip it. You can put it in a lot of places that you can't normally put, you can't put a, a whopper plopper. We'll talk about that a little bit later. I understand the bait now. After using it, putting it in my hand, spending a little time in it, I understand why it's good. I understand its place. And so uh, I'm just going to share with you the equipment that I use to, to fish a plopper with and why I think it, it helps me be super efficient with it. This is a bait that uh, you can cover a lot of water with. You can, you can go fast, as fast as you want to go with it. So your equipment needs to be equipment that helps you do just that. Now my rods, let's just start with the rod. My rod for, for throwing a, a plopper, I just throw two sizes. This is a 110, this is one I use the most. And then occasionally, like in the fall when they start getting a little silly, I'll use the 90 size plopper. Um, so those are the two sizes I use. And I use the same rod. This is a seven foot, okay, medium heavy power. This is a fast action, medium heavy power, seven foot rod. And this is the favorite pro series. What I like about the Pro Series rod, like if you need a versatile rod for you guys, I know everybody's not going to have 30, 35 rods. If you can only buy two, three, four rods, look at the favorite Pro Series. This is this is a series of rods that the, all the, the pros, the touring pros at Favorite Help Design, we all put our input in the grip size, the handle lengths, the actions, the powers of the rods, all the way down to the eyes, all the way to the way the rod looks. I'm usually putting these baits in pretty tight places i'm making little short casts i'm making accurate casts i'm very rarely making very very long casts this these neither one of these are baits that i like to fight fish for a very long time with i like to for him to bite it i like to get his butt in the boat i don't want to fight him i don't want to use the drag i don't want him jumping i don't want him to have anything to do with the say so of what's going to happen once he decides to bite this bait so my gear kind of says that seven foot and that sounds small but get, keep in mind i don't need a giant rod because i'm only casting you know 30 40 foot at a time 20 foot cast 15 foot cast I'm, I'm making pretty precise casts, putting that bait in shade lines under trees around stumps so i'm not making long casts with it so I'm going to use a seven footer because that helps me do that a little bit better. I've noticed when I use bigger rods that um, I'm not as accurate with my cast. It's just they're a little bit more clunky. I can't do what I need to do as, as well with the with the seven three, seven six foot rod. I like the 30 pound test braided line the best. It comes off the reel a lot faster. If I need to reach out there and touch them just in the event that I do, I can do that. Smaller diameter lets me cast further, comes off the reel a little bit faster. So. I can just do things a lot faster. For you guys that are not used to using braid or not quite as good at casting, just know who you are. 50 pound test braid, bigger diameter, more resistance, comes off the, the reel a little bit slower. So you just got more control, less line twist, less backlash. So it's gonna work out a little easier for you. Four as my reel goes, I need a fast reel. I wanna burn it. And I'm I, most of the time I got my trolling motor turned up on 10. I got it on 100%, I'm gone. So I'm throwing it out and I'm reeling the boat to the whopper plopper. So I want a fast reel, eight three to one gear ratio reel. This is a team lose hyper mag, it's fast guys. Fast reel, eight three to one gear ratio, 30 pound test braid. It just lets me go fast. For me, this is all about speed because a lot of times this time of year, summertime, there ain't a lot of fish on the bank. And so I've got to cover as much water as possible to be able to get just a few bites throughout the day. So. That's my setup. Gonna be the same setup for a buzz bait for the same exact reasons. Now, even though these baits are similar yet different, much different, you know, in profile, they're a lot different, but in the sound and the way I'm gonna use them is very similar. 
But there is some advantages to old school versus new school. And there's some advantages to new school versus old school. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. You got the setup. Now let's dig into the baits and why which one works better than the other in certain situations. So my Whopper Flopper, this is a bait, as I mentioned before, I've kind of, uh, I was late to the bandwagon on this deal. I'm kind of old school, so I was just throwing my buzz bait, not really, not really feeding into the whole Whopper Flopper craze. So I'm a little bit behind the curve, but what I learned about it, man, is I, I really like it because I can cover so much more water, even more water than I can cover with, with the buzz bait. The thing that I like about it the best is you see on a Whopper Plopper, I don't know even what you know, there's a couple other brands out there. Uh, Berkeley has a Chapo, this is the Rivers of Sea 110 Whopper Plopper. It's got treble hooks on it. So your hookup ratio is actually a little bit better if you can get one to come up and swat at it than a buzz bait. Cause they can play with a buzz bait a lot. They can come up and push it and roll on it. But if he comes up there and gets anywhere near it, especially when you change out the hooks on the whopper flopper, your hookup ratio is going to be a little bit better. But places that I like to fish it, you can see I'm back in this little nook right here. And it's got a little shade. It's really bright and hot today, but anywhere I got a little bit of shade, I'm fishing it around docks. I'm, trying, I'm just trying to put that in every little hole that I can. And it's clear water. You see, anytime you got clear water like what we got right here, Shade is about the only thing these fish got to, to use for ambush. So I'm fishing around docks, I'm fishing around some of those steeper banks. And you can call those fish up with this thing. You know? Like I'll throw it all the way up to the bank. A lot of times in clear water, fish will use the depth change as a, as a way to uh, ambush whatever prey they're gonna fish in. You see I threw it way back there behind the dock because they'll use that dock for shade and I can call them out from under that dock. Lay downs, I'll, I'll cast them around, lay downs. Sometimes just on bare bank. That's what I like about this bait. Like I can I can turn my trolling motor on like 10 and just burn it up. Just burn it, burn it, burn it. Catch as many fish as I, as I need to with it. That's what you got to do this time of year. There's not going to be that many fish shallow when you're talking about summertime fishing, especially, especially when you're talking about August, September. There just ain't a lot of fish shallow, and then the ones that are shallow, they aren't really active, but you can draw a strike out of a bait like this. You can hit a lay down and keep it moving. You ain't got to sit there and, and mull over it all day. That's the beauty of this thing, is, is just being able to burn it. If there is one downside that I would say of a, a plopper style bait versus, let's say, a, a buzz bait. At least with a buzz bait, I can skip it in some of these darker places under the pontoons, uh, under the dots, under the laydowns. Only thing that I don't like about the plopper versus the buzz bait is the fact that you can't skip this bait. It's got to be just a straight on cast. You can get real fancy with casting it because it's heavy, so you got a lot of control over the bait and where it lands, but you don't have a lot of flexibility of where you can skip that bait. You're, you're not going to skip it. You're just pretty much not going to skip it a whopper flopper or a chopper or any kind of these prop style baits you're just not going to be able to do it that's one thing i do love about a buzz bait you know buzz bait you can interchange the plastics out a buzz bait you can uh, the, the one that i throw the buzz bait that i like to throw you can even make it have different sounds by just bending the wire a little bit so a buzz bait kind of shines in the fact that you can switch out the plastics Buzz bait shines in the fact that you can put it in more places. I can put it under the docks. I can skip it. I can do all kind of funky stuff with it. But when it comes to just flat out speed and hookup ratio, I'd probably have to take the whopper plopper over, over a buzz bait. But nonetheless, I think you gotta have both, especially if you like to hang up on docks like this, like what I just did, throwing in behind the cables. Sometimes I catch them behind the cables. What do you do when you get them behind the cable? You figure that out once you get them on, but the biggest thing is to get them to blow up on it. Let's go with the old school buzz bait here for a minute. What I like about the old school buzz bait is I can put that bad boy in a lot of places and I can change the profile. You see, I got a big chunky piece of plastic on here. It's a little bit more versatile in the profiles you can create. You can put a swim bait on the back of it. You can leave the skirt like the old school buzz baits on here. Um, but you know, this one's going to have a lot of noise to it. This is, this is an impact style buzz bait. The blade hits up against the head of the bait. So it creates a lot of noise. So, um, 
That's one of the things I like about a buzz bait. It's real versatile, but what you're going to like, what you're going to see that I really like about it is the ability to not only use it as a bait to cover a lot of water with by fishing it on bare banks, but I can also put it on the docks and so forth. Well, my buzz bait, this is the, this is the main reason that I just didn't really catch on to the whole whopper plopper craze for a long time. Because I was just using my buzz bait and I was just doing fine. Didn't really take the time to understand the tool of the whopper plopper. The biggest difference between this guy and the plopper is where I can put it. A lot of people look at the buzz bait and all the blade on it and it's kind of hunky clunky looking thing. Doesn't look like a bait that you can skip really well, but I promise you with a little bit of practice and using the right plastic on the back of it, you can skip it pretty good. Obviously your rod reel setup and practice means a lot, okay? But one of the things that means the most, when anytime you're talking about casting or uh, skipping a bait, boat position. Boat position is just like your footwork in football or your footwork in basketball or your footwork in tennis. If you, if you don't have the boat in position, you don't have the angle on the dock. One thing I just did just now is I did a 360 with the boat to get the boat on my good side. If you, if you cast best, I can cast off the left and right side, but I skip best off of my right side. So I got the boat in position to make, to, to be able to cast at this dock and skip my buzz bait up under it. And I'll show you that makes a huge difference because if I had the console in my way, the way I had the boat going, I can't make my bait, my back cast as well as I can off my right side where there's nothing in my way. So that makes it a lot easier. When I'm trying to put a buzz bait under a dock, under a pontoon, patience, patience. I see so many people rush the cast. Wait till you get to the dock. Wait till you're absolutely confident that you got the boat in position to be able to cast it under, under the dock. So I've got it in fairly decent condition, uh, position right here, not the best, but you wanna just start high. You wanna start low, I'm sorry. Start lot, low, finish high. That's the, the magic to it. If you start high, finish and finish low, <coughs> backlash territory is where you're gonna land. But the whole secret to it, starting low, finish high. That's the whole magic to it. Whopper plopper versus the buzz bait. You need both of them, but of course one is better for certain situations than the other. Just know the difference. You need to get in those tight crannies, pick out your buzz bait. You can put it in better places. You need a little bit more noise, you need a bigger profile, get a whopper plopper. Burn the bank up, put the trolling motor on 10 and cover a lot of water. So that's the way I like to use them. This is the equipment I like to use. Make sure you subscribe. Are you subscribed to my channel? If you're not, Sicking the police on you. Police, baby. I'm gonna put the police on you.